Okay, well, my name is Darren Thompson. I'm 45 years of age. I'm from the United Kingdom. I'm of mixed race. So my mother's from a small island next to Madagascar called Mauritius. My profession is that of internet web development. I have a small team that I work with on an ongoing basis. And most of my customers are from either the UK, Canada, Australia, or America, anywhere that speaks English. I think the biggest reason was the fact that, A, I had already been there. So it wasn't a case of me coming over to decide if there's anything there I like. It is, it is a place that I had already been to on and off for over five years. So by the time I knew I wanted to make the place almost a second home, it is somewhere that I had already got to know as my second home previously, and there were enough cultural character traits that were familiar enough, as similar as my mother's culture, that made me feel at home, sometimes even more at home than I did in my own country, England. Unfortunately, I don't have the luxury of knowing the answer to that question. During the last five years, I have always been working for clients in other countries, but I have used the services within the country. I have used the local community for day-to-day -day living. So yes, I do find them very helpful. I do find the prices that we pay here significantly lower than back home. And as long as you are prepared to pay a price somewhere in the middle, then you usually end up with something of far superior quality than you would ever get back home. But I can warn you, if you want to pay the bottom dollar, don't be surprised if there are a few things missing. I'm going to answer that question in a different capacity. And I think it's going to be more interesting for yourself and most definitely more interesting for your viewers. Rather than answer the question, what was the biggest cultural shock for me? I'm going to tell you what is the biggest cultural shock for a European that they probably haven't told you and you're probably not even aware that it's a problem. And it has to be the toilets. Now, Anish, you are from a country the same as my mother, the same as France and some of the other European countries that will be quite accustomed to the hole in the floor. And the reason why it's not a problem if you're accustomed to it is because there is a particular way of using it that if you've grown up doing so, it's not a problem. If you look at the average 40, 50 or even 60 year old who's waiting for a car on the side of the road, waiting for someone to pick them up, you will probably find them in the crouching position. This is a type of position of the Japanese and the Chinese do it as well. Yeah, my wife, could, my ex-wife could do this particularly easily. But if you look at them, they are in a particular crouching position where they're not standing, but their backside is not actually touching the floor. And it's something that if you've been doing this from, from the very beginning, if you've been doing it from your childhood, you will be able to do it with relative ease. Now, if you've never ever done this at all, even by the time you're in your mid-twenties, you are not physically going to be able to do it. Your body is not your body is not going to know how to do it. It's going to be physically impossible. And therefore, you have to find another way to do it. So the average Englishman will go into the toilet. He won't be able to get into the crouching position. So what he will do, and it will look like an L shape, is he will try and hang his backside over the back. And to make sure he doesn't fall over, he will try and hold onto the handle of the door. Okay? And that's quite dangerous. So, yeah, in actual fact, I think if you want me to give advice to someone from my country, it's be aware that the handle on the door might not be as strong as you think. But they're holding on to this handle. Okay? And if you look at the crouching position, where if you are crouching, and I'll probably send you an illustration, you can put up the illustration now, you will see that where your backside is compared to your heels, because the back of your legs will almost be sitting on the back of your, what should we call it? So your thigh, the back of your thigh will almost be sitting on your calves. Well, English and European people can't do that. So it means that 
the part of your body where the waist leaves is going to be in the perfect position to be lined up with the hole. Whereas with the Englishman in the L shape, okay, the part of the body where his waist leaves is going to be perfectly in line with his underwear. So he needs to hold his underwear to the front. So yes, I would say that the biggest problem is going to be that of the toilets is going to be the biggest shock. It's probably going to cause an accident that they're going to learn from very quickly and never repeat. And they're probably going to make the decision that maybe if they need the bathroom, they will do it before they leave the hotel room and maybe get home early enough so that they don't have to use the public toilet. So yes, that's the biggest shock. I would say that the hospitality of both Uzbekistan and Kazakhstan is far greater than the average hospitality of almost any other country. It's ingrained in their culture so much that it's something that they are particularly proud of and they make even more of an effort when they meet somebody new. I would say it's even more important for the Kazakhs because of their nomadic history that perhaps because of the nomadic history they would just get to see, meet and greet strangers on more of a regular basis and it would also help their own culture because at any one time as a nomad you would find yourself one day as a stranger so therefore to be able to greet somebody else it's almost a form of empathy if you will so yeah I think it's particularly important and whenever I find myself in somebody's family home I've always felt privileged if you will in a much greater capacity than I've ever felt at home my favorite and most likely most popular dish in Kazakhstan by the expat community and maybe even the locals and if you are ever an expat or a foreigner in Kazakhstan and you do find yourself in a taxi it's most likely going to be the first question you're going to be asked have you tried the bishbarmak? how is it made? well they use these very small slices of pasta very similar to the Italian pasta I'll be honest do you know what I use that pasta for? I buy it, I got the stuff here, okay? I buy this and I use it for the base of my lasagna, all right? So it's, it's amazing. Um, it has um, beef, it has um, the horse meat, the, is it kizzy, yeah? It has the onion, it has, it has everything in it that you would expect uh, a traditional fulfilling, fulfilling meal has. So yeah, I, I do like the Bispalmak and when I leave the country, the first thing I do when I come back is to find somewhere just to have it. Oh, and by the way, if you're a foreigner and you go to Kazakhstan for the first time, try it as soon as you can because it's much quicker and it does put a delight on the taxi driver's face if when they ask you if you've tried it, you can tell them, yes, and it was absolutely lovely. So yeah, if you want to score some brownie points, try it as soon as you can. I do know some of them and I do know the differences between the Uzbek version, the Kazakh version, which is the difference in pronunciation, and then I know a third version which I call the Nargiza version. Because I have a wife who's Kazakh but raised in Uzbekistan, she will speak a sort of Kazakh which is somewhere in the middle. You understand? So yeah, I mean I know all of the, I know how to say in Uzbekistan Rakhmad, here Rakhmed. Um, some of the other things I find very peculiar, but I've got used to it, is the fact that there are a lot of similar things from my mother's culture. My mother coming from an Islamic country, for example, it's very common to hear phrases such as um, Salam Alaikum, okay? Which in my mother's country is more to do with uh, peace be with you. But here, the Islamic culture is so ingrained in the culture itself. It just means hello, it means hi. You understand? So there's a, a lot of things that perhaps I do know. There's a lot more I recognize that I'm not necessarily able to say. One of the negative aspects that I do notice a lot more when you come out of the capital, when you come out of the more cosmopolitan areas, that uh, when you 
meet the locals, there is much more of a stronger nationalist, nationalist stance on what's acceptable. And as someone who has a Kazakh wife, I don't necessarily feel as welcome as I would have done if I had been a foreigner with a foreign wife or a local with a local wife. So I do feel that there is a, a stronger national presence, nationalistic presence in the outskirts, but obviously because I find myself in more cosmopolitan areas with like-minded individuals, it's not a problem. If you are traveling to Kazakhstan for the first time and you're English, I'm gonna bring up socks. This is quite an important one. You see, if you're from the UK and you take your clothes out the cupboard and you look at a t-shirt and you're like, oh my gosh, my t-shirt's got a hole in it. What do you do? You throw it in the bin. However, for some reason, if you take out of the drawer a pair of socks and it's got a hole in, you're like, well, it's already been washed. I'll just wear it once and I'll throw them away. And if you're in England, that's absolutely fine. However, you're in Kazakhstan. And in, in Kazakhstan, there is a distinct possibility you're going to be invited into somebody's home. And when you take your shoes off and your big toe is sticking through that hole, the reaction you're going to get from your host is the same as the reaction you'll get from someone else if you start walking down the street in England with a big hole in your t-shirt. So, remember, if you have a hole in your socks, don't wear it that one more time, throw them in the bin, because in this country, when you go to someone's house, you take your shoes off. We, we have an expression in English, actually, that when in Rome, do as the Romans, and I think it's particularly important. If you look at the... British and the American stance on when foreigners come to their country. We like to have our culture respected. And there's even been mention in the press, for example, about how the locals in England and the US, they can feel somewhat uncomfortable if there's too much of a larger number of people walking around with burqas. And we get it. If you're in that country, you should respect the way it is. You should respect their culture. But it also works the other way. So you need to understand the culture here. And just as you would expect people to expect your culture, if you find yourself in Kazakhstan on a hot summer's day and you want to nip to the shop and grab a couple of beers, put a t-shirt on. Don't think it's acceptable just to run to the shop without a t-shirt with all your bits hanging out because you're a man and it's okay. It's not. You have to respect the culture here. So find out a bit about the culture. Find out respectable. Find out what isn't. Don't necessarily be all cuddly with your wife because it's okay because she's your wife in this country. Perhaps it isn't. And if you do that, you will enjoy the country a lot more and it will be a pleasure for the locals to welcome you also.